four and counts up really slowly for no reason. You have to factor that in. Um, but if you can weigh all those things together and your name is Gabby, you can get to rank one legend very easily indeed. Or Zerios, or uh, is, Blyze, a few of them. What is happening? <laughs> McBannerface is on four, man. I like what Checker's on two. McBannerface has a Shaman hero, but has Barak, Cotobane, and Kolkar. Okay, <laughs> something's wrong. Uh, I'm going to go with something's All wrong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is what you don't want to be doing if you're playing uh, the Aggro Elemental Shaman, is totaming up on turn two and turn three. Um, but hey, you know, who am I? Um, <sighs> so no free admission for Lango Tacker. Start things off. Has an eight card hand. Can't backfire. It's going to keep tapping. Getting close. Oh. And so one thing about this deck is, you know, we say that it can be done on turn five, but you don't have to, right? Right. You can, you, you wait until, if you're not super confident in your ability to execute with the deck, or even if you are confident, but just want some time to think it over. Ooh, that's not what he wanted to see. He wanted to see, now he has less chance to hit Steel of Souls from free admission, but uh, I digress. Um, you can wait till the last possible moment, right? The, as long as your opponent's not playing like Cold Neophyte or something that can disrupt your ability to go for the combo. Yep. Hit Steel of Souls Darkler anyway! Doesn't matter. That's it, is it? That's that's the analysis. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. He's in a super spot for next turn now. Well, I I still. Again, he can he can wait. He doesn't uh -huh. have to do it next turn. The longer you wait, the easier it becomes. Uh huh. But it looks so good. Uh, one thing that Sotil always points out, and I actually did it after Sotil mentioned it on broadcast earlier, and my opponent added me and said, "Hey, that was smart." Um, so I felt good for two seconds for listening to Sotl, was oh, if, if you wait too long, your opponent can hit you for a lot of damage with his Shaman deck and make it harder for you to go off. Yes, and also there are things that, that um, in between those, right, if you play a Soul Fragment card, the animations take longer. Your turn takes longer because you're drawing Soul Fragments. If you play Rune Mithril Rod in between, the Rune Mithril Rod animation makes your turn take longer. So there are some times when the faster you go, the faster you go off, the better it is. Um, so yes, you're, you're seeing the combo in action. It, literally 20 seconds into this, into us broadcasting this game, we see it. Um, and you can see the stress levels on Language Hacker's face. He knows he's won this game of Hearthstone, and the only thing stopping him is him. But you've got uh, to be so concentrated. Uh, he's out of card draw. We must Ah. Okay. Well, do the thing. There is no thing to do, is there? But do it anyway. Then there's this sort of weird plan B where you just put a load of things on the board that are so big your opponent just dies to the minions. You are still at least only one step removed from being a zoo deck at this point. Even yeah. now, with only six demons. Oh, okay, so this is a really smart play from Language Hacker, because at four mana, the only way to kill both Stealers, both stealers of Souls uh, would be double Rockbiter weapon, and then sinking s 16 damage into Stealer of Souls, right? Right, yeah. So uh, he puts the second one on board, because now this presents an awkward turn for McBannerface, where he has to decide <laughs> if... if uh, if this is even worth killing, which he he has to kill it or he's dead. It's a, it's it's checkmate, whatever. Yep. Nice work from Language Hacker. And the thing that's clever about that is when you're going off and you run out of card draw, if you're not careful, if you're not practicing the deck, there's this moment where you just sort of freeze. It's like, okay, now what? Because you've been panicking for the last 60 seconds. Yeah. And yeah, he, he made a very controlled good play here when he had to bail. Yeah. I mean, so it might just be like. So it doesn't. It, you can't just kill one of these, right? Like, it, it doesn't yeah, matter. You, you're not going to kill a Steel of Souls. If you're not killing both, you're not killing either because it's a persistent effect. It doesn't double up. Dark Lord, however, does double up, right? Because every time you damage yep. yourself, you gain two mana crystals instead of one. So there is benefit to play one. Um, gets an elemental down, so next turn he would have Rock Better Weapon plus uh, the Gyre Worm as a way. Um. 
This is awkward, though. Yeah, but Banterface yes. has put him on the spot. He said, you've got to kill me, or I am actually going to beat you. <laughs> or a little yeah. heal out of range, or many other things. But yeah, let's go with that. He, he didn't hit draw again, so now has to tap, which makes it awkward. So now he's only five minutes left. Oh didn't my. hit draw again. Wow. So the draw that was left in his deck was one backfire, two hand of Gul'dan. Um, so it was like a, a roughly a one in three there to hit draw. Because he already used both free admissions, and um, didn't have like Nightshade Matron as a draw as as well early on, and now he's dead because Rockbiter got to face. Kept his cool as well, like in the face of that, um, realizing that hung, like you pointed out, he can't kill the two sixes, so don't just yep. insert that damage into your opponent's face and hope something unbelievable happens. Something unbelievable happens, and if there's any nerves from a banter face, which don't seem to be showing, let's face it, going into his first broadcast Grandmasters game, kept his cool, and that will settle anything down. And he looks like he belongs here. Look at him, look at him. Just, I yeah, just I, easy. <laughs> I mean, from his perspective, he played that game perfectly, right? Um, yeah. So, like, th that's, that's all you can do, right? It, it may seem like Language Attacker's deck built itself, but just the setup turn here. He killed a Dark Lair, which actually does matter because it means if Language Hacker has to fit in a life tap, he's only at five mana. He doesn't have he doesn't have mana to spend the cards that are on his left side of his hand that still cost mana, not health, and still be able to play Tamsin in the same turn, right? Um, and limited his life total, so it just made it as difficult as possible. He also played an Elemental, which set up for the Gyro next turn, so he didn't panic like you said. Um, you know, made sure that he was going to have lethal the next turn, and you know, Language Hacker did what he could. <laughs> like, he just m whiffed on draw, right? He didn't find any of his hand of gold dance, uh, didn't find the second backfire when he needed it. Um, the only argument you can make is, did did he need to go off right there? Could he have waited a turn or, you know, even, you know, mm -hmm. potentially a couple turns in order to uh, get off that combo? Um, but even, even you know, after that, right? I think, you know, playing that second Seal of Souls after he went off, went off with the first one in the Dark Lair was incredibly smart on his part as well. So, you know, maybe he, in a vacuum, right, he played that that game as well as he could have also, just didn't hit the card draw at the end of the, kind of the Steeler of Soul Dark Lair, Dark Lair train. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really weird game indeed, but kept it together, McBanter Phase 1-0. And now he goes on to this Paladin deck, which has got some secrets sprinkled in amongst it, like some of the Paladins do. And Language Hacker is back on his 1-5 and five Warlock deck. I don't know why I always pick on Hacker's Warlock every season, about some reason or other. He's just one of the best players in the world, and I, for some reason, find it necessary to pick on the poor guy. <laughs> He's one of my very favorite people as well, I will say. Yeah. Language Hacker uh, gets my Prime sub every month. So, I should tell you a lot. I, I have to, to beg in his channel for subs. Oh, okay. But. Well, you know, that's another way to go about it. <laughs> um, all right, let's talk about this Paladin a little bit since it was banned in our last series, I do believe. Uh, it is the secret variation, as you could tell by the uh, Northwatch commander in the list. Um, and like? call it hand buff, but uh, it's it's not that much right. hand buffage going on. It's really just the Alliance Bannerman. Um, there's not the, the tool kit, uh, the jewel kit. Uh, the one mana divine That's shields give your minions in hand plus one plus one. That's my definition for hand buff. Does it have that card? Because yeah. you end up with such monsters in your hand. But this is the secret version, and nobody's bought the the super stealth version either of hand buff. Let the <laughs> jungle panther, which I've been bur bursting for somebody to say all day, that build, which is turning out to be yeah. complete nonsense. This is very different. Yeah, the the the, the get 'em version of the deck. <laughs> yeah. All right, Rune Mithril Rod for a language hacker. This is going to be, uh, really? I don't want to say traditional, end. but I think with this version of the deck, the free admission uh, hit Steel of Souls Dark Lair is the tra traditional. Um, all right, Hand of Gul'dan uh, picked up. That would be a nice couple with the Nightshade Matron next turn. 
So this seems like a pretty easy school spirits. Yeah, that works nicely. Do you think we're near the the perfect build of any of these decks yet for the Warlocks in particular? Or do you think there's still a lot of work to do? Uh, I don't know. Um, like, can you had auctioneers or card draw into the Warlock? Like, that's the only thing, right? <laughs> as weird as that sounds. Like, we've had auctioneers, we've had more healing, we've had less healing, we've had more card draw, I think. Uh, so you, you're just thinking maybe a little more consistency would be needed, potentially, if you were trying to make it even better on a yeah, but level. I feel like it already has a lot of consistency, right? Yeah. So this interaction we just saw is one of the ones that is a little bit inconsistent for me, is the matron hand combo it's it's pretty easy to get but it's a little bit clunky again i'm, I'm nitpicking because i think this is the best deck in the game but uh, I, so many I don't think it's the best deck in the game oh say that what's the best deck in the game so tj long. uh face hunter <laughs> <laughs> it might well be it's not the worst cool yeah yeah. I mean, Warlock, I think, is the best class because it has multiple different archetypes that can fit multiple different situations. Mm -hmm. Face Center is very one-dimensional, whereas Warlock can craft a deck based around the quest uh, that beats different things, right? Um, I mean, I think that this Warlock deck is the deck that can kill people with kill people with absolutely zero board interaction the quickest than any okay. other deck. Um little setup. I can't think of another one that can. Maybe OTK Demon Hunter, but that, even that's difficult. Like, turn six is pushing it. Turn five is It does sixes, but it. not as, yeah, not as consistently. Garot Rogue in an ideal world can do it on six. Oh, the Rogue deck. If you get super, super lucky with blood draws, you can do it on five as well. Mm. <laughs> just, just play blood, put all your spell damage on the board, and hope the next turn. Just draw them all. Yeah, uh, but we're we're now in the territory of Battlemaster Conviction kills me. Um, yep. So you you got to be afraid each and every turn. Um, but oh, okay, never mind. He he gets the discount again with the Remithal Rod, which means he has enough mana for both of these plus the backfire. So he's hit card draw. Turn five. Here we go. Another backfire. Uh, backfire to backfire. Roller. Yep. Language Hacker was ready. I wasn't even paying attention to this. I forgot he was going to get the second discount from the Mithril Rod. I was like, he needs one more turn, but nope, gets a second discount from Mithril Rod, and now it could just pop off. All right. He shuffled Soul Fragments in, so those animations. The quest animation takes a long time. He got his Rune Mithril Rod off first. You want to play, you usually want to play your Rune Mithril Rod in this sequence if you were to draw it, but he has the second one that costs mana, so he's not going to. Uh, later on as well, because as I mentioned in the previous game, that animation actually takes a long time to go. You want to maximize, or no, you want to minimize animation time and maximize your action speed. Here comes the vote. Look at his face. That, like the I know. lip twitch, the full concentration. You're just waiting for the end turn button to, to gray out or whatever. Okay, still going. I'm waiting yeah. for his reaction. Oh, he said okay. So he didn't kill him. Uh, I don't think. Uh, I don't but think he, he had enough to kill him. If he had more time. No, because. Did that cost health or mana, that Nightshade? I don't know. There's been splodges right? all over the place now that they keep. Yeah. <laughs> a little agony goes I don't know. What any okay, so he, anymore? So he got the Tamsin up. I mean, regardless if he killed him or not. He killed him, right? <laughs> like, yeah, you'll go. <laughs> yeah. Physical card game, you push your glasses yes. up and say, you'll go at this point. The victory is yours. <laughs> I mean, Her Hammer of the Dark is like not a bad card for six man. That's one of the best. But he, he's not doing anything against that. All right. So that is a pop off. Obviously, if you can go at light speed, start immediately and not be held back by animations. Language Hacker with like 15 more seconds, 10 more seconds, could have killed him on that turn. Um, because he still had cards that costed health in his hand. He was at seven, right? 
So yep. he had a little bit of health to work with and could have had some more healing effects. And in fact, he just wouldn't need to play the cards. He wouldn't need a healing effect. Once Tamsin's played, you don't need the healing effects anymore. It's before the Tamsin's played that sometimes you need the healing effects. Um, so it, he just needed that little bit more time. Because I'm going to see what his hand looked like, even though it's hard to tell because those blood droplets are all over the place at the end. Yeah. After he played Tamsin, I'm pretty sure he had enough health cost stuff in his hand and unstable bolts and whatnot to get there. But that is one of the skills of this deck that shows Hacker has put in the time and does understand it. You don't have to kill your opponent, right? If you can do what he did here and set up enough of a board and know that you yeah. put in the taunts in the way and know your bailout is, okay, I'll put some taunts in the way and they won't kill me and they can't clear my board. If you put the time in like Hacker quite obviously has, then you, you win those games anyway, even though you don't get to do the full pop-off and get yourself on the top five moments of the week. Yeah. I think what we're supposed to say when that happens uh, is Gabby would have killed him. Yeah, oh, Gabby would have killed him twice. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the, the, new, uh, the new thing to say. Uh, language Hacker is going to move to the Quest Mage. We didn't see me banner faces deckless, which means he's going to be staying on Paladin. And, uh, yeah. This one is... <laughs> A little bit easier for McBanner face, I'd say. Uh, uh, the thing is, you play minions, right? Oh, okay, sure. But he has to freeze them literally every turn, or kill them literally every turn, because after turn six, yeah. Conviction Battlemaster will kill you. Kill him on turn six, then, right? Just freeze them all for five turns, or have McBanner face draw absolutely terribly. That's another option. I mean, he has got the Banana Man, but that's about it. The Banana Man. Yeah, it's like if you're saying Banana Man really fast. Uh-huh. Wait. <laughs> that's fine. He's got. What is that? Down. It's a, it's a Tesper card. That's fine. He, he, he came through the Tesper system. I think they reached top 32 mm. one season, but he didn't get anywhere the other season when, when he played in Tesper. Played with a different Hacker, team though. both years. Language Hacker, one of the most... Uh, outside of Nobboard, one of the most successful... Right, right. am I thinking of the right person? Language Hacker, he was very successful in Tespa. I'm not sure. I know Ego Waffle, who we're going to see earlier, won at Tespa. And that's why he started streaming, but I'll get onto that later. But that is the Tespa Dalaran Flame card back. I'm not quite sure why we're seeing it, or what it's meant to be, but there it is. Just chilling in his hand. Maybe he wasn't. What the heck? Pretty sure he was. Yeah. I don't know how successful it was. I just remember him appearing on stream a lot. Uh, right. I guess, because I cast that a lot. Whether that means he was successful or not, jury's Perhaps out. you were casting with him. No. Okay. Well, you know, you've got to try. <sighs> yeah, no. I know how my memory works at my age, you see, so I have to sort of, you know, pretend. Yeah. Anyway, Hacker. Under no immediate pressure, and he's trying to work out what that means for the future. Because if the Paladin had nothing early, the later stuff's going to be pretty scary. Mm -hmm. There's also a secret up, which we cannot see, mm. but it is there. Pretty sure it's there. And by the it, it's on the left side, it is a. What is that one? Job done. Galpic Savior. I don't know. Oh, two secrets in the deck, so... It is one of the attractions of playing... It's a, the main attraction of playing this version of the Paladin. Oh. He got Counterspell from Oh My Yogg! Really? It's not too heavy. <laughs> now he's not going to die from Conviction! Wow. It is the attraction of this Paladin deck, is that you can um, slow down people's quests by just playing a secret on one, and they can't play their quest on one. Or they might get it yogged another really strange game with some strange numbers going on as well with two mana on one side and four on the other yeah we're gonna have to be on our toes TJ we've got to be sharp like an arctic fox Job done. always ah, I like this the fire how much pressure on board oh that's fine oh. that works that's better than yeah. fireball 
Because he, he was thinking of a way to play around both uh, secrets, right? If it's Oh My Yog, then devolving missiles, or if it's not Oh My Yog, then throwing away devolving missiles is like, uh, meh, right? Then he would have to play into Galloping Savior. Whereas throwing the fireball, four mana spells are better, right? You, you, yeah. They're just better. And, uh, you know, you, you don't need it to kill your opponent later in the game once you complete the quest. So, um, I like that play a lot. Gives him more flexibility in the future turns as well. Well, we miss was doing some pretty good work there. My Banderface thought he was going to get away with the middle one there, but no, the last hit takes it down. Okay. He's had an awful draw, hasn't he, my Banderface? Like, nothing's gone his way in this game at all. No, but, I mean, that's... <laughs> that's Paladin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. One thing goes wrong, you fall over. One thing goes right, your opponent falls over. It's like, you could be losing the entire game as Paladin, and then you, like, stick a 5-5. Five five. <laughs> yeah. And then next and then next turn, you're like, whoops, I won. A 22, unlucky. Yeah. Not a 5-5, five five, right? It's got to be probably something you bigger. You just conviction eight. it twice and hit them with a battle master. That's that's 22. It's 5. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, there you go. So, it makes it stressful on your opponent's side, too. I remember when Paladin used to be stressful because they used to get a 1-1 one, one that would stick and it might become like a 4-4, four, four, so you had to kill it. But now, they've ramped that stress up to the max. Because now it just kills you. Language hacker. And look what it's, yeah. Screaming in delight because he drew the fire spell. Which was the only spell school left needed. To complete that uh, portion of the quest it is just the first portion, just to draw a spell. But now he's already, ooh, and picks up another one. Actually, can complete the second part of the quest this turn. But That's I think he's gonna wait. Quick, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's gonna cost him one mana, so okay, sure. Yeah. Stall the, for uh, time, position. it's called. I told you that they're named after what you have to do. Stall for time. Yeah. I don't even know what any of them are called. That's what I was saying earlier. I just remember that this one sort of told you what to do, but I couldn't remember exactly what the wording was. And that's the only one I know. Uh-huh. I'm 30 again, but he's probably dead next turn, so... He needs to sort it out, this hacker. Yeah. What would he best... Like, he's got that flurry. He's been saving that for this moment, right? Still needs some card draw, so he's he's getting there. Actually, that's a pretty nice pickup, and Kanishville will complete the third portion of the quest. Um, because now he has uh, in Kanishville for Arcane, Flurry for Frost, and you know his his pick for uh, uh, for the next one. Um, hmm, Combustion's interesting. I don't think it helps clear this turn, so just gonna go for evocation no. because needs resources. Emergency resources at that for presumably next turn. Yep. Assuming there is one, which there is at the moment. Yep. Still needs some some gas. Because just an evocation. I mean, evocation picking up flurry. It's a. It'd be a nice move for desperation. Um. He would need some card draw to go with it, right? Because he he needs to win the game in two or three turns from here. Yeah. And if I'm McBannerface, honestly, I'm just loading up one of these Battle Masters. Mm -hmm. He's got two. The only down... I mean, because his other play is like getting rid of the counter spell with Hand of a Doll and then playing like Bannerman and then the uh, Pack Mule, which... I don't know. Yep. Yeah, you've got to allow for the fact that Language Hackers, he's completed the quest, so he's going to have the the bonus spell damage. Your 6-6 six, six is probably not long for this world, so yeah. loading up something else to give yourself yeah. two beefy hitters makes sense to me. Yep, he's going to go Bannerman and goes uh, strongest minions in the middle, weakest minions on the outside. What did he pick up? 
Oh, three mana fire sale. That clears the board. Uh, nearly clears the board with our good as clears the board. Yeah. He's at his six damage to all. Leaves uh, McBannerface with a two two. And I said you can stick a five five and win. Moment. Can't do it with a two two. What to do? Because he has a counter spell up, so at worst it would be one conviction myself. battle master, which would be uh, just a ten damage. Is he gonna? Yeah. He's gonna ping it. Okay. Yeah, he's gonna hot streak ping it to fully clear the board. Wow. And then he's just relying on evocation with nine mana plus a top deck plus he's got a seven one next turn to to get himself some card draw and remove oh, the board. Uh, he drew the conviction. He could have proc the counterspell with Hand of a Doll, Battle Mastered, and Convictioned. Oh. oh. That was one turn away. Still a 9 9 on board, though. There is a Divine Shield yeah. minion left. There is a Rush minion left because he's got Blade Master Samurai, Goody, two shields. Um, so this will be a 9 9 second round. If Language Hacker doesn't find a way to answer this, it, it would be lethal. But he's got an Evocation. He's got a draw off the top. He's got an Arcane Intellect, Double Refreshing Spring. Well, there's that problem solved before he even yep. plays the evocation. I mean, you, you're getting yeah. nine mage spells and you have seven mana. Wait a second. Is there like no card draw there apart from if you count a rigged fair game? There's the he's font. Got, he's I got guess. double first oh. flame. He got double first flame. Yep, and you might as well use both, so you get the second, the double second flame in hand. And then you throw a rigged fair game, play a Conjuring Mana Biscuit, call it a day. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's probably enough. Job's done. But if he draws badly, his problems are not over yet, but yeah. Wait, what'd he get? Oh. <laughs> well... <laughs> oh my gosh. He's not All used right. to having good fortune, to be fair, on, on stream. He has had a pretty bad run the whole of last season, it felt like. So, um, this is interesting. Grand Magus Antonidas, uh, if, you've ca if you've cast a fire spell on your last three turns, you cast three fire fireballs at random enemies. Um, he has cast a fire spell on his last three turns, it's not necessarily good because I, I, I'm pretty sure unless this has been fixed recently, it, it, because it's Grand Magus Antonitis casting the fireballs. Yes. And not you. You don't get benefit from the spell damage uh, from the Arcanist Dawn Grasp. Um, so there's no like weird lethals that you can have. Um, I think Mazaki is like the far more interesting one in this case because he's he's got an encounter full played and can just start. Blasting off spells, but um, no card draw again picked up, which is weird. It's got 13 cards left in his deck. Uh, let me go ahead and take a look. Uh, got it. He's got one cram session, one arcane intellect, two refreshing spring water. That's the card draw left in his deck, so still a good amount of it, but can't cycle to get there. <laughs> I mean, at any point, he could just grab Magus Antonidas and just say, Yeah. All the day, you know? <laughs> and um, he, he, he picked up the burn. <laughs> oh, he's going to yep, play it! Oh, yes! Uh, uh, he loses if it misses both three times. There we go. He got there. I mean, it's a 1 1, but I'm incredibly scared of it. Yeah, I think if that had gone face three times, the conviction into Battlemaster, the double conviction into Battlemaster might have actually just won the game, so he'd had to have flurried as his backup, yeah. Yeah. If I mean, if he drew Hand of a Doll here, it actually would have been lethal if he hadn't flurried, right? Because he has another <laughs> Hand one, of a Doll on his deck. Yeah. Because <laughs> it would have been nine attack, and he would have had mana to also fit in the Battlemaster, so it would have been 18 damage. Oh, no. If he had drawn, if he had drawn Hand of a Doll and Language Hacker flurried. So Language Hacker... Oh. I mean, this is like a 100% win as long as you flurry, right? Because he's got another fire sale in hand to deal with another wave yep. of big board. Um, so, still needs draw, though. It's not lethal with what he has, I don't... Oh, no, it is. Yeah, it is. Sorry. Forgot it is now, yeah, yeah. Knight was there. Yeah. 
No matter what that damage of the ignite was, because it's beast five damage when the quest is complete, it was lethal. All right. Angry Cat ha Hacker was pretty happy with that. Now he's, he's sort of shaking his head as if to say, oh, I don't believe I was this lucky. But honestly, you know, accept it while you can, because if we saw what happened to him last season with bad luck and fair play. Good to see him popping off like that. I remember when he was like, he went 9-0 and at the first dream hack we really got to know him in. We'd, we'd heard of him before that. And he was like, yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm enjoying myself. You know, I'm, I'm language hacker, by the way. And now look at him. This guy, what has he become? Most confident man in Hearthstone. Look at that. Let him go. He's got the, the gamer glove on, too, so his wrist slides even more smoothly across his mouse pad. More actions per second when he's playing D6 Warlock. Just optimal. Optimal. Most Killing efficient machine. gamer out there. Yep. yep. Doing that. All right. Well, I mean, <laughs> Pal Paladin's actually a good deck. It's just these last two games, McBannerface is just like, all right, I'm gonna play my minions in turn. You see, you, you do your thing. I think it is. I, I'm, I think that the version we're starting to see form now, the stealth version, is very scary. I've got to admit. Uh, I'm not so sure these I make a big thing and Battle Mastery versions are particularly great. They're really good against combo, but I am looking forward to seeing what happens with Paladin like next week with the stealth version that's just started to come about with Lasagna. I saw Mr. Yagu playing it as well. Um, blast from the past there. It, it looks terrifying. Ah... <sighs> We'll see. We'll see. We will see. All right, McBannerface, moving over to the Quest Fatigue Warlock. Um, no Stealer of Souls in the deck. So this deck just wants to cycle as fast as possible, get quest completion as fast as possible, to get Flesh Giants down as fast as possible, and then Battle Master, Wind Fury, smack your opponent's mm -hmm. face for a million damage. Um, yeah, I mean... <laughs> Is there more? It does have the, I'm going to call it secondary, secondary win condition of actually completing the, ta the quest, getting the Tamsin, and then uh, using damage yourself effects, life tap. If you're in fatigue, that's even better uh, to win those long games. But we've seen that, you know, long games in this meta game are what? Turn 10, turn 11? Like that's yeah. the longest games go. So. And Language Hacker on the Quest Rogue, which... Noise. Is this the caster's collective least favorite deck this time around? Oh, no, I, I like this deck. Stick oh, here we it. go. We got one. Okay. Yeah, that feels honest, right? Like, it feels... It, it's actually incredibly strong. Like, you plop this deck into, like, the last metagame, it's tier one. Easy. Um, but in this metagame, it just, like, gets things done a little bit too slow. But if you are playing against pretty much like any board-centric deck, it, it just muscles out because of its tempo, uh, at least in, in my opinion. Um, I do think it's probably the weakest deck in Language Hacker's lineup. Uh, but I don't... Being the weakest deck in the lineup doesn't mean it's a weak deck. Sure. He actually brought this deck in when he changed his decks around for, for his Shadow Priest. Uh, presumably to fill the same slot, doing the same thing slightly better, right? Um, the, the Shadow Priest, not particularly great against the the healing style Warlock that McBanterface is playing. So, if you go head to head with the other attacking decks, I think I slightly prefer the Shadow Priest. But you're saying the Rogue, if you get the tempo on, maybe it's a who goes first situation. Anyway, Hacker thought it was important to swap this out and put this in. Take the Priest out and put this in. Uh, that sort of backs up what you're saying to some degree. Yep. I think I would put it slightly above Shadow Priest. I think Shadow Priest fell off a cliff. Like it was incredible. Language Hacker, he's pumped, man. I'm getting pumped. Yeah, he's, he's good. In fact, it's something I love the, about this. Really the SI curve. They're all at it. Yeah. They are all at it. But Banderface does have the, the weapon which and the backfire. They're two of the most important things in this version of the deck. Because uh, you do need to rummage around for something to do. The deck kind of tells you where you need to be, not the other way around with this deck. Because you have so many 
weird interactions for wing conditions. Uh, he wants to get that backfire down as soon as possible, which means he needs to get the weapon down as soon as possible so the backfire can do its thing, and then he'll know where he wants to be. Yep. A soul ran, double soul ran as well, to be able to deal with like first waves of boards. As mm -hmm. long as he's not like uh, discarding his like his flesh giants, it's fine. He can pretty much take anything else. Um, so how this deck wins for Language Hacker, kind of similar to Paladin, right? Maybe that's where the idea came from to put stealth minions in. You complete the quest. Uh, uh, you get the... I don't even know. What is it? What is he? Um, he's got a weird... Scabs. Scabs sure. something. Yeah, sure. Scabs the secret um, agent. I master Scabs, something like that. Yeah, that's the one. Um, and then you you get the 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 spy gizmo that gives him stealth and plus attack, and then you battle master the next turn. Usually by that point, your opponent's either low enough or you have a wicked stab to combo it up. Um, and you just kind of draw through your SI cards to get there. The Greyheart Sage fits nicely into this deck because there are multiple SI seven cards that have, that give stealth. There's the Skulker and the um, Operative, which are both on board. Operative needs a minion to attack into, but can sometimes get stealth. You put in the spy missions as well, just to get more consistent draw with Greyheart Sage. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Scaps is in there for tempo in the early game. Yep. A lot of the time at least. So, I mean, it is a card that when I first started, I was told to leave it out, but I put it in anyway because I'm a rebel like that. And yeah, it's sometimes you just win by going so wide with him after a secret passage or something. And that works out quite nicely. Yeah, um, uh, Stealth Horse 2-4, man. One of the most underrated cards going into the set, I think. It's turned out to be a really good shape for for a card. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a great card, but luckily for luckily for it, it has an SI7 tech. <laughs> so. Right. Yeah, 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 you wouldn't be playing this in a normal sort of rogue deck, but where it does yeah. things and is... It just turned out that 2-4 was a good shape for this meta to have the ability it's got on top of all the other things. So you yeah, can actually um, play it. Yeah, all those minions you're attacking into, you know? Possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> I love this meta. I've got it. I just, I mean this wholeheartedly. This is one of my favorite metas in a really, really long time. Yeah, because decisions matter so much. Right, the battle right. good to go. Yep. 15, save from Battlemaster, plus the weapon swing. Actually, 18, because the quest completion just took a second. It's just a giant short, or anything, any, any minion that's huge and playable short of being in a really good spot suddenly. A yeah. cruel fate awaits you in the ashes. Okay. So, um, there are a couple ways to go about this turn, right? If he swings with the weapon and let the weapon uh, death rattle right, kill the Colt Neophyte and then attacks, the it means his 4 4 won't have stealth anymore. He could, like, uh, attack the minion, but then he'd be missing out on 4 damage. No, this is just, this is cleaner. He still has a stealth minion on the board, period. Not that yeah, he I'm about to face to live anyway. But wants to tap and raise deads and things to try and get his giant even cheaper. And with 11 health, that would be a little bit too awkward as well. Yeah. Not that he has a giant, which is a big misplay in your first 16 cards to pick up zero <laughs> giants in his deck. Yeah. I mean, imagine if he this did. Is... Yeah. Because he be... could life tap, soul rend, giant, and scavenger. This giant would be free at this stage of the game. Uh, Smash giants and friends. Drawing one and then destroying three. Uh, he'd get exactly ten cards. So scavenger would be one and then uh, flesh giant would be free. So if he taps first and hits giant, that's still possible. Okay, let's do that. One in seven. Ah, he's going to clean up. Oh, he's going to play sensibly? Well, I mean... Yeah. 
wants to heal a little bit to play around like a, the player on Wicked Sap range. He needs to not discard giants. One giant. Okay, he's still got a one giant in the deck. He's good. He's also down to only 10 cards, so everything's like active now. His one mana 6-6 six, six, and his bristlebacks and all that good stuff um, all becomes a lot stronger now. Yeah. So we're not just giant gamers anymore. Yeah. Yeah, what are we looking for here? Foreman, I guess? I don't even know. Stuff. Uh, he needs... Right. Is he get one more? No, he needs two more, right? For scabs? I don't know. Yeah, two, two more. more. Thank you. Because he had quest completion if he had just played the uh, operative and SI7 agent on the other side of the secret passage. Right? But he's he was looking for something specific. Uh, oh, no, it's Assassin. Okay, sorry, it's not an operative. Never mind. <laughs> he's, he's still could have done it. He could have played Assassin first and then SI7 Agent, but I think the Assassin is too important um, because he's he's going to need to kill something big like on the turn that he completes the quest or, prob or yes. you know, the turn before he completes the quest or whatever. So Yeah, absolutely. And he's not going to have to kill many big things. So it's not like he's... So if you can kill the two or three big things that come down, you're in a great spot and you force... You force my banter face to then go for the, the secondary win condition or whatever area it is of the yeah. quest and damage so to yourself. Possibilities. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no giants, apart from the one that he burned. Yeah, a little bit rough. A little bit rough. Sometimes it just bees that way. Yeah. Why do you think that, um, is it to do with playtest groups maybe, that different regions have such differing opinions on which Warlock deck to bring? Uh, I mean, most of America has brought this Warlock. So. All right, and nobody else did anywhere, almost. Not quite. Yeah, yeah. Like Monsanto brought more of a traditional zoo, a little bit different, um, like a zoo with Steeler of Souls, oh, and then Language Hacker brought the six demons warlock. Um, but it feels like everybody else, at least that's competing today, has this uh, yep. self fatigue yeah, plus giant scavenger tough. variation. I feel like that has to be a play test group thing, and because they obviously don't all play test with each other, because that would be kind of silly, but. Word gets around, right? You play test with somebody and they test with. T Go. No, just. That's a good draw. Sorry. It's, that's it, fine. That's an, it's, it's involuntary. Honestly, I can't help it. When there's a uh -huh. good draw, my brain, my brain just makes that noise. It's a good, good skill to have. Is it a skill if it's involuntary? As long as, like, you're not doing it in a live tournament when you're playing. You might you might give things away. I wouldn't be. Um, I don't think you should be playing poker with that involuntary reflex. You get an ace and you're going. Oh wow! Oh, 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 oh what a draw! <laughs> and yeah, you can't fake it when you don't get the ace. So everybody just knows your hand the whole time. Like that'd be grim. Not as grim as Banterface's hand, but it'd still be grim. Yeah, he's still got some ways to defend himself. Still has the double drain soul. Uh, plus Bristleback, so he's pretty healthy. It's just that health can disappear so fast uh, when mm -hmm. we're talking about this uh, this quest rogue. Because again, the Spy Master scabs um, come down, get the Noggin Fogger get Gizmo. I don't know uh, the Stealth plus two attack <laughs> one, and then Battleground the Battleground Battle Master uh, to give it Wind Fury, throwing a Wicked Stab there. You know you're cooking. Um, uh. But there's a clock here because this will be second port. That's only second portion of the quest complete. Um, I thought it was much further progressed than that. I yeah. guess it's only turn seven. It just feels like this game has been going on for a lot longer. Yeah, loads of things have happened, but it is only turn seven. You can do a lot of things in a turn now. It's a bit like Battlegrounds where, you know, in, in one turn you can buy something from Bob, swear at Bob, tell Bob to give you a new shot, and eventually buy the things you want. Or fire Bob and get a totally different bartender now if you want as well. 
Ah, oh. so this was a. Oh, okay. So I didn't notice this before, but this was actually a sick setup for McBannerface mm. that went like five turns ago. The Tamsin play, where I was like, oh, he could do this, this, and this, and he went Tamsin and then played Drain Soul and then Soul Rend. He kept himself a second Soul Rend to be able to kill right. the scabs. Yep. The stealth scabs. <laughs> and he'll be able man. to. Yeah, he'll be able to um, actually do damage that way as well, right? Because he's got two of them. Yeah, alright, so he's... He can fatigue himself eventually this way. Which is good if he gets the other Tamsin down from the quest completion. We have two Tamsins and two Scabs. We're going to have to be very careful with our wording here. Um, what's his quest progress right now? Zero. Okay. Uh, remaining cards Sorry. in the deck for uh McBanner face. There you go. Has a flesh I giant, think he... a scavenger. I feel he might be trying to take the right amount of fatigue here, but he's got to try and get that giant as he goes. So he can take the right amount of fatigue to get the quest and then play the Tams in and then win with the rest of the fatigue. Oh, that's all of his threats. Gee. That's one scavenger and two flesh giants discarded. So now he's 100% on the game plan of, of self-fatigue. And he needs to un unstable shadow bolt this, I think. Because he would need to quest next turn, so he could unsta like unstable shadow bolt his tour guide, uh, and then life tap, and then that would complete his quest. Then play the five five, and then roll into fatigue from there. I don't know. I mean, he has two touch of Nathrism, or no, he only has one touch. Well, yeah, he has one in his deck, and then one in his hand, plus the blood shard bristle back. So he's got ways to heal up. But if language hacker just plays kind of this removal game, um, and then like eventually sticks to thread, I think he's. Okay, I mean this is this is mapped out from one of these players. Yeah, and the thing is, language hacker also can do the same mapping. He knows exactly what we know about what cards are left in the deck, so he yeah. knows the best places of plays available from a banter face. The downside is it's incredibly complicated because of the, oh, as you see, my banter face is still counting because of the interaction with the completed warlock quest and fatigue hurting your opponent, and the fact language hacker only has fifteen health. But he does have an 11 11. Oh. Ah. Possibilities. Is there any way to heal to 30, get down the quest completion? Plus 30 and kill off one of the minions because he's only taking 26. Oh, plus the stab. That would actually be 30. Okay. That doesn't help. No, I don't think he I don't think he can get there. It just doesn't line up. He has to kill this 11-11. So he has to blood shard bristle back and uh, unstable shadow bolt. It's quite, and then that only deals one damage to himself. The life tap would only deal two. He, can, he completes the quest next turn, but then takes the full amount of damage before he's able to play Tamsin. And then from there, the damage he would start dealing to Language Hacker would be four. And so then he, yeah. would, three, then he would need three turns from that point. So he needs at least three more turns. Sure. Oh no, it's two damage to himself, but I don't think that changes the clock. Yeah, because he life taps next turn, takes the full fatigue anyway. Because he only takes one fatigue. Right? So it's not completing the yes. quest. He'll have to tap, take the fatigue damage from the tap, and then play the quest. He does. And I don't think it changes much, but he does get to trade in his Thanos. Yeah. Honestly, the fact that he, from Soul Ren, discarded a Scavenger and Double Flesh Giant hurts. Because it also affects his Raised Dead pool because he's not bringing back those massive minions, right? In 8 8, at any point of this game, could have put McBannerface oh. like way way far ahead. 
Hacker does have to kill these. Hacker does have to kill this three three. Yeah, three, but three, two attacks is ten is six plus four. For he's playing a, not enough. a thirteen thirteen this turn. Like oh I know yeah. Bannerface is dead, so he he doesn't have to. Uh, he because he'll he'll still net three damage by holding onto the wicked stab. He's not dead this turn. Awesome. And with this, he can't kill the battle master. So would oh well, he, I guess it's not net six. It's net zero, right? Because he could win fury it. Um, but there's a battle master in hand, so he knows he can't kill it. That's game over. Yep. It's twenty six damage plus a wicked stab. That's a OT. And language hacker knows it. McBannerface knows it. <laughs> It's funny because when you've seen so much Warlock, you feel like other people playing it as well as yourself. You feel like there must be a lethal here. You've got six damage from the pistol <laughs> back, and you can tap, and that's another two damage, but it's not. And then there's some fatigue that doesn't quite work. Oh. So if he didn't kill the Thalnos, if, if Hacker didn't kill the Thalnos, it was actually lethal for him at Banterface. Yeah. I, I guess you can... No, that's just lethal on board. Yeah, 26 plus yeah, yeah. 4. You knew it. Good setup from Language Hacker. Uh, showing the Wicked Stab to j just to show that he had it and it didn't matter. You'd think that's BM, but I think that's like, you know... Mm -hmm. Just kind of showing him like, hey, you know, it didn't really matter what you do. And Language Hacker's like, hey, whatever. <laughs> Uh, one with Rogue. Nicely done by Lego Attacker. Honestly, um, even though the end got a little messy for McBannerface, you can't account for all your threats being burned by Soul Rend. I think like the holding of the zero mana Soul Rend with the Tamsin, that setup turn, to be able to guarantee kill the scabs, clean. And if he hits any any flush giant during that game, like completely different game potentially. Um, so uh, even though he lost, I think it was a good showing for McBannerface. I think he just got <laughs> he just got Hearthstone a little bit today. Yeah, yeah, he, he had some pretty bad draws and language hacker, very, very focused. And not that he never is, but yeah, looks very well prepared. And he and Monsanto, both worthy winners today, I feel. Um, you can only beat what's put in front of you. And if McBanterface chooses today to draw really badly, you just take advantage of that and, and you go and beat him if you can. Because McBanterface yeah. played well enough that he had lethal outs or win outs in all of the games. If if, your, if his opponent made mistakes, he was going to win the game. So that's all we can do. Yeah, yeah and if this season is going to be the opposite for Language Hacker of last season, because, you know, you can say, like, hey, maybe Language Hacker brought Warlock a little bit of too many times in season one. <laughs> um, and, and, you know, that's 